Hey what's up guys, it is Sekiro like Sam here and welcome back to the channel and today guys we're gonna be reliving a series on my channel that you guys have been appreciating a lot and you actually asked me to continue this series which is the survival FPS shooter in Unity and you can see that this is a brand new project which is unfortunate because apparently the project got a little bit corrupt when I was importing it from my other computer it might be that the Unity versions are a little bit different as well but I don't know what it's really connected to but I decided that I would just recreate the series instead of like worrying about that because I think that I can do some things in a better practice as well. So yeah, I decided that I would just create a new series for this. But anyway guys, if you enjoyed the series, make sure to drop a like down below, it really supports a lot. And um, I'll catch you in the comments when we end the video. So now, as you can see, this is a brand new project, nothing is important, so we're gonna start off from there. And you can see that the scene is pretty new as well, we just have a main camera and a directional light. I'm gonna start off by actually deleting the main camera then I'm gonna go to my project tab right click create um, or actually we can just import to start off with uh, there we go we can import a characters pack so that we have the FPS controller etc oh there it is there we go everything else spawns on my other monitor because it's uh, toggled as the main monitor so um, yeah it's gonna take like two seconds for you guys to see what I'm actually talking about but if I like if I don't move it right away uh, whenever we open a new window, but that shouldn't be a very big problem. So yeah, don't worry about that um, Right after this is done with the importing We're gonna create a plane that is going to resemble the ground for our player and We are going to use the rigid body FPS controller provided by unity as a standard asset But you can use any kind of movement script any kind of player script you, can, you want to or you wish to use uh, it works perfectly fine. I'm just using this because it's the perfect example of doing so and it's free <laughs> I mean, it's always a plus right? So like I said, we're gonna create a plane here There we go. We can scale it up quite a bit actually there we go And then we can rename it ground right off the bat and now we're gonna enter the standard assets folder go to characters uh, First person prefabs and then drag and drop the rigid body FPS controller into our scene. There we go so something that I usually do is I just move back the character a little bit so that we can actually have like a huge plane to play around with and then I go to the character like zoom in a little bit and then I uh, let's see there we go so the capsule collider I'm going to edit the collider actually we don't even need to edit we can just increase the height to perhaps 2.3 nah that's too tall let's have it at 2 and now I'm gonna move the camera up a little bit and I'm doing this because I don't want to play a midget character <laughs> and that's that's pretty offensive but <laughs> <laughs> but at the same time, I don't really want like a very short character because the regular height, the standard height is very, very short. So I'm also going to tag this as player. And we can also change the name and rename it to player. There we go. And let's see, do we have anything else to play around with? Nope, I don't think so. Um, then we can enter our project tab once again and then create a new folder. Uh, oh, this is gonna create it inside of standard assets. Well, well whatever, we're gonna move it anyway. So we can call the scripts and then drag and drop it into our assets main root folder here so that we have it under assets right away. Um, then I'm gonna create a new C sharp script inside of it and call it player. There we go. So this is going to be the player script where we all uh, we have all these like um, the all the different systems really like hunger thirst which we're gonna be focusing on in this episode especially so we're gonna drag and drop the player script onto our player object very simple and let's see here we can unfold these or perhaps fold these uh, I can fold this too and then we're gonna double click on player there we go visual studio at least opens up on the correct monitor <laughs> there we go all right we're gonna remove these two and jump up line down there we go so now we're gonna start editing the code and we're going to start off by placing a little comment here and save variables and then we can place another comment and save functions so these are going to be the two different sections and i'm going to refer to them to make it easier for you if you're a newcomer here too uh, so that it becomes a little bit easier where we're actually editing for you um, i can actually zoom in just a bit there we go so instead of our variables section we're going to now say public float max health uh, comma max 
thirst, comma, max hunger. So this is basically going to create three different floats, which is named, which are named max health, max thirst, and max hunger. And we're gonna do one more, but this is going to be a little bit different. We're gonna set this to private float, and this is going to be just health, thirst, and hunger. And these three floats that we create from different to these ones are going to resemble how much health, thirst, and hunger the player currently has. So these are going to be more dynamic, meanwhile these are going to be a little bit more static, which we set from the inspector, and that's why I also set them uh, these three as private, because I want to make sure that the security level is correct for them. Now into our functions section, we're going to create public void start. There we go, and then also public void update. Oh, that's a link. <laughs> there we go. That's literally like my YouTube link, I think. <laughs> Alright, so now in here, we... Actually, we can go to public void start to start off with, and we can set health to be equal to max health by the start of the game. And in opposition from setting health to max health at start, we're not going to do the same thing with thirst and hunger, because thirst and hunger, technically speaking, or theoretically speaking, they increase, right? And health decreases when you get hit, but your thirst and hunger increase. So we're going to make sure that the hunger and thirst functions actually, um, or the f systematics at least, actually make it so that thirst and hunger increases over time. So we can actually set a new comment here and say thirst and hunger. Um, increase perhaps and then we can say mm -mm -mm, if thirst is lower than max thirst then we are going to say thirst plus equal mm, we could actually create a variable for the amount that we want to increase thirst by so we can set a new public uh, float right underneath the other public float that we already created and say thirst rate thirst increase rate and then comma max or uh, hunger increase rate there we go so these are going to be the two variables that we use to detect how much we are supposed to increase thirst and also hunger by every second so we're now going to say uh, back to the function section obviously we're gonna say thirst plus equal to thirst increase rate mm, times type time dot delta time there we go so what this is going to do it's going to set thirst to be plus by thirst increase rate which we're gonna edit just in a bit um, and time that by time dot delta time which technically means every second so this means every second and we're gonna do the same thing with uh, hunger also so we're going to say if hunger is lower than uh, max hunger then we're going to say hunger plus um, equal to hunger increase rate that's the name time times time dot dot time there you go so this is going to do the same thing for that and we're also going to have another if statement which we're going to use to check if the player's hunger or thirst has been uh, reaching that that level of uh, max thirst and max hunger so we're gonna say if thirst is greater than or equal to max thirst Mm, yeah, we could actually remove these two brackets and then we can set it to be the same thing pretty much just... Yeah, let's start with this first. Uh, we can then just set die. So we're going to kill the player if thirst reaches that ne level. And we can do the same thing with hunger. So if hunger is lo greater than or equal to max hunger, then die. There we go. Um, let's see here, we can jump a few lines down below the public void update and we can say public void die. And here we can just simply say print you have died because of thirst or hunger. There we go. We can make it a little bit more custom later but this is pretty much the basics or the gist of it. Um, so now what we're doing here, we're basically saying, okay, so if thirst is lower than max thirst, so if player has not died yet, thirst is going to be plus by thirst increase rate, which we're going to edit, and we're doing the same thing with hunger, and then we're basically checking if thirst has been reaching the, uh, or has reached max thirst, or even went above that, so that we don't risk bugging the game out, because sometimes when you plus a number or a digit by something, like a variable, 
it can it can sometimes pass that rate or pass the constraint that you pretty much just pass on to it and then you basically check for if it's greater or equal to so that you don't risk bugging the game out like i said um then we have a public void die uh, in conclusion so we're just printing you have died because of thirst or hunger and now we can go back to unity let's see here and we can go to our player there we go so max health we're gonna set it to be 100 max thirst perhaps 150 and max hunger can be 200 <laughs> And then we can set the thirst increase rate to like 0.65, I mean very random number that really fits your game. This is something that you can patch obviously. And then hunger increase rate perhaps 0.8 because the hunger, max hunger is a little bit higher as well. There we go. So this is going to save. Uh, we can also go back to the code in, for just a short while. And mm -mm -mm. I want to visually see how much the yeah we can actually make it very simple for ourselves and we can set the private float health thirst and hunger to be public for the moment being just temporarily so we're gonna change this back to private right after this test um i'm just doing this to see these values change live uh, when we enter the game so we're gonna see here there we go so thirst is increasing hunger is increasing you can see that hunger is slightly faster um health is obviously staying but when we actually reach that level of, um, we can actually set these to like very ridiculous numbers like 50 and maybe 90. And then we can play the game again and you're gonna see that the printing is going to be done because the player is going to die in just a bit. There we go. So you have died of because of thirst or hunger. Um, there we go. And you can see that it's printing over and over again and you can prohibit that from happening by either killing the player or you can simply set it to be Mm, we could have like a boolean this is going to be private bool dead or maybe <laughs> player is or player dead yeah there we go should we just call it that should we, we should just call it that there we go <laughs> all right so in here you can pretty much just set it to be dead equal to true and i removed the print line because it's not really needed anymore um mm -mm -mm. we could set the public float that we made it public uh, we can set it back to private and we can set the boolean to public instead to make it more more fun um mm -mm -mm. thirst my thirst all right all right all right mm. yeah we can now actually just print player has died once again there we go and d -d 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 let's see here hmm we could actually just check if the player is dead or not so if he's not dead we're going to increase or yeah increase the hunger and we're also going to increase the yeah we could actually do that that's that's much more efficient i believe and what you can do you can change one to exclamation mark if or like if exclamation mark dead and then you can cut this line for thirst and just paste it into if dead statement that we just added and i'm gonna describe it in just a bit there we go so you can have it like this and the reason is because either way, if thirst is going to pass, surpass this number, or if hunger is going to surpass the maximum hunger, you're going to die anyway, right? So either way, you're going to die, and then we can just simply check for if player is already dead, and optimize the code a little bit. So this is a tip, like it's a very, very small change to the script, but it works perfectly fine, and it's actually called optimization. So we can now also try the game one more time, just for the sake of it, to make sure that it's working all perfectly fine. Um, now we enter the game, dead is false, and you can see that dead boolean, which is the public boolean that we recently created, is turning right, uh, true now. And you can see that it's still printing too, but it's printing one time only, even though it's repeating itself, uh, because we now don't have two different if statements, instead we just have one, where it's like hunger and thirst in the same if statement, and then boom, it's going to die if he reaches that number. So we're gonna go back to Unity, 
Uh, before ending this video, actually, we're going to change the thirst increase rate to 0.65 and 0.8 for hunger increase. Now, the, the point here is that you can play around with these float values, the thirst increase and hunger increase rate as much as you want to, because obviously this is something that is going to suit your game. So if you have a different kind of, you know, rate ratio for your health, for your hunger, etc., you have to play around with the values to make sure that your player doesn't die too fast or too slow for that matter. So yeah guys, this is pretty much it for this short tutorial. I know this was a very short episode, but in episode two, we're gonna cover up the inventory. I'm 100% certain about that. And in episode three, episode four, we're gonna get into like drinking water, eating food, and the point, the reason I'm co gonna cover up inventory in the next episode already, like right off the bat, is because when you are eating stuff in a survival game, obviously you wanna use a inventory, an inventory to equip the items or pick up the items, etc., and then equip them and eat them, right? So we're gonna make sure that that happens by having an inventory right off the bat, because a survival game, in the end of the, at the end of the day, a survival game really highly depends on inventories anyway. So we're gonna have that out of way way, so it it will make it easier for us in the future as well but anyhow guys i hope you all enjoyed this episode we are making this series live again uh that sounds like make america great again but i need to come up with a slogan for the series <laughs> anyway guys hope you all enjoyed your time watching i hope it was helpful let me know in the comments if you have any features you would like me to cover up in the series and if you guys enjoyed this series, make sure to drop a like down below. Like I said, subscribe to stay up to tune for new videos. And also join Discord. We're running a giveaway and it's like one day left to join right now. I think it's less than one day. It's like 22 hours. So make sure to join, guys. The links are in the description and also in the comment section. In the pinned comment, better to say. And um, yeah, with that being said, I'll catch you either in the comments or in the Discord server. See you guys. Bye-bye. Yeah.